so we're gonna do a desert overnighter and I have the pop-up camper It was considered the greatest mass migration in American history, 250,000 people. A lot of fun exploring, I love this kind of stuff. Hey guys, Chris here. Today I'm taking a trip to Pyramid Lake, Nevada, and Pyramid Lake is connected to Lake Tahoe via the Truckee River. It's pretty cool. It's a very large lake. It's in the desert, so we're going to do a desert overnighter. And I have the pop-up camper and that I've talked about in the past. I have not done a video with this yet, so we are taking the uh, pop-up out tonight and going to have a good time and talk about some history up there in the desert of Nevada, Northern Nevada, so that's next. Also, my first stop here on this little mini road trip, we were at a place called the uh, Chocolate Nugget. It's like a chocolate factory, handmade chocolates, and they have a giant prospector <laughs> that they have up in the sagebrush hill here behind the uh, chocolate candy factory there, so that's pretty cool. I think he was part of a casino at one time, and he's got a giant gold nugget in his right hand there. Check that out. Nice. I think they repainted him because last time I was here he didn't look this sharp but he is huge. That is awesome. I, I grew up in Minnesota, so I'm used to these kind of things. Paul Bunyan, Babe the Blue Ox, Giant Fish, World's Second Largest Hockey Stick. You get the picture. Cool stuff. That's a huge lake. I see white caps out on it. It is a little breezy right now. But this lake is 15 miles long, 11 miles wide, and at the southern end, the Truckee River flows into it. And there is no outlet. This just, just comes, it ends up down here, but it's a fairly deep lake too, so. But there's a giant pyramid right over there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a giant pyramid over there, so. Yeah, pretty cool. I'll be camping down here somewhere, so. All right, I'm trying to find a camping spot here. Got a really cool rock formation right here. That I could maybe camp right next to. Make sure the camper's level though. Yeah. All right, I think I got a spot here. It's, it's level and I got the uh, lake down here. It's a little windy tonight. <laughs> Feels familiar. I hope I, would, hope I don't have to stay up all night again. And uh, look at this rock formation, isn't that cool? So there's my, uh, my wagon train, so to speak. So I think we'll, park it here for the night. The sun is, you know, it's like three o'clock, so I got about an hour, hour and a half, but need to set this thing up and uh, get some dinner going and settle in here. 
Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting night. Just gotta finish off the inside here and uh, make myself cozy here. Oopsie. <laughs> now we got a table. And I uh, did not bring my sleeping pad. I did bring it, uh, a regular sleeping bag, not a, my backpacking sleeping bag. And uh, I did get a new sleeping bag. I got a Kelty Cosmic Down Zero, zero degrees. That's gonna help a lot with the uh, winter camping. So that was, it is so cozy, so comfortable. I'm gonna do a little review on it too. I think it'd be kind of cool. So I got the Kelty Cosmic 20 and the Zero. Obviously it's not, it doesn't go down to zero. Probably 10 degrees, and the 20 is more like 25, 28 or something. It's my experience anyway, so. All right, it's pretty cool around here. I like these uh, formations. We're gonna have to check these out in the morning when there's better light. And I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of the uh, Hacienda. Yeah, I got it nice and stabilized all the way around so I'm in it there's gonna be no wobbling things like that but yeah so nice big table here I like that two seater at each side big big wide cushions here this has a, a water storage underneath here right there with a little water a little sink right there and uh, here's one of the beds, pretty straightforward. I like the uh, tile flooring, tile flooring. It's, <laughs> it's really vinyl flooring, but used to have carpet in it. I hated the carpet. It was this baby blue, baby blue carpet. I pulled it out. I thought, well, I'm gonna pull it out and I have to replace it with something. Underneath the carpet was the tile, tile. <laughs> and I was really pleasantly surprised that I didn't have to uh, redo the flooring on this thing. But uh, you can see it it's, uh, looks pretty nice. The uh, curtains need to be changed out. But I love these um, cozy beds like this with the, uh, the windows on the side. And then the curtains can, like I said, I'm gonna replace these curtains. I, this, is not my, this is my least favorite color is a baby blue like that. But. Got the uh, Coleman stove two burner going. We'll be working with tonight. Yeah, I'm so used to the uh, jet boil, pocket rocket too. How just small and efficient and quick they are. But this is a dual burner, so that will be much appreciated tonight. And then colorful stuff. And we have a specialty beer tonight, as always. This is the. Uh, Icky IPA by Great Basin. There's actually a state park in central Nevada along Highway 50. Actually, it's off of Highway 50. Berlin Ichthyosaurus State Park. And they have a giant Ichthyosaurus that they found there. A few of them, and they're excavating one. Also, a old mining town. I did a video years ago. It'd be fun to go back and check it out again. 
So also we have the uh, also we have the uh, Coleman Lantern. I grew up with these things. I love them. They put out amazing light. Obviously, you're not going to be doing any backpacking with something like that. Obviously, you're not going to be doing any backpacking with something like this. But for camping, regular camping in a little camper, this is pretty nice. So this will really light the place up. So I won't have to depend on my headlight. I'll be using that a little bit. So, And yeah, that's about it. Also, we just got, got the water here and decided I'm just going to go with use that as my water source just for tonight. So lots of cabinets in this thing. It's really compact, but it's really efficient. Um, the heater needs to be fixed. And so I'm going to have to get that fixed, get the curtains fixed, make a few adjustments. But yeah, I'll be using this uh, in my videos. That'd be fun. So, all right, time to get some dinner going. All right. So this is what we're having for dinner tonight. I got some natural ground bison, street tacos, the tortillas, the lettuce and tomato, and some salsa, and my beer. So we're having, having some street tacos tonight. That'll be perfect. I'll make three or four of them too, so. And my beer. I didn't bring a lemon though. I could use a lemon or a lime. That would've been kind of nice to add to that. So I got this uh, camper well ventilated. It's the only way you can use a stove like this inside of a camper. It's kind of like my backpacking skillet, but this one's much bigger. IPA. I did not bring taco seasoning, but that's all right. I have some good salsa and salt and pepper. That'll be just fine. How quick this comes together. <laughs> and tomorrow I'm making a big giant breakfast. Okay, Canadian bacon, roasted red skin potatoes here. The lighting looks, makes them look kind of weird, but I'm just gonna cook those up and uh, Scrambled egg. I think I might even make an omelet. Cheers. That is good. I love the artwork. That is really cool. Berlin Ichthyosaurus State Park. That is going to be worth checking out. I think I'll just take the, bring the camper there. That'd be a lot of fun. Bison tacos. Bison street tacos. I'm going to have a ton of these. Wow. Yeah, there's only so much you can get on a teeny tiny tortilla like this, so get in there. <laughs> but yeah, this is a bison burger. What is... The tomatoes really finish it off. There's other things I could would love to put on this, but cheese being one of them. But we're a little simpler because we're camping, so that's fine. There we go. Street tacos. <laughs> oh, this looks great. Street tacos. Bison street tacos, very affordable, very easy to make, super easy to make, and uh, 
Very fun. Mm. I do love the Coleman Lantern. It is uh, doing a good job. That is really good. Let's bring this over here. There we go. Yeah, there's a lot of history in this Pyramid Lake here, also in this area, with the uh, California Trail, the Immigrant Trail coming across northern Nevada and then going up over these passes here to get to California. Um, yeah, I think I, I think after dinner I'm going to talk about some of that. That would be good. But in the meantime. Cheers. We got a nice moon going on out there. It is a little chilly tonight. I, I got the sleeping bag pulled up. I do not have a heater in here yet. I am going to get a heater put into this camper. It's going to make my life a lot easier in here and extend my season in this camper. But uh, it's going to be four. It's currently like 42, and it's going to get to 27 tonight. So I do have a good down sleeping bag that's going to really help me out. But yeah, this is Pyramid Lake, and it is uh, 50 miles long, 11 miles wide, and it connect. It connects to Lake Tahoe via the Truckee River, so it's a really clear blue water that flows into it it's really pretty cool it's a very beautiful lake in the middle of the desert here and it has uh, been part of the pyramid lake paiute tribe is lived here uh well they've been this has been their reservation since 1859 but the paiutes have lived in northern nevada for for centuries and uh also kind of interesting is that Kit Carson and John Fremont came through here prior to coming down the Sierra and cutting over the Carson Pass. When I was up there talking about the Carson Pass, they were up here prior to that trip where they got stuck up there for about five weeks up in the, uh, the mountains there in the snow. But they came through here and were the first non-native Americans to see Pyramid Lake and so they named it Pyramid Lake because of the big pyramid form at the south end of the lake here. It's pretty cool. This big giant, literally a pyramid out there. Also in this area, <clears throat> which is interesting, is the California Trail comes through here and goes over the Sierras into California. And in the 1840s and 50s, 250,000 people over those couple of decades came through here they started in Missouri essentially came through Nebraska Wyoming Idaho cut, certain cutoffs and side roads would go through Utah and then in Nevada and then it would branch off from Nevada and go to Downer Pass Beckworth Pass Carson Pass and head different parts into California or it branched off into Oregon up there and became the Oregon Trail and this was in the 1840s and in 1848 they discovered gold over there at Sutter's Fort and they really had a big rush of people coming over for the gold but they had they all had to come through northern Nevada and follow the Humboldt River which was the east west flowing river and in and in in the old days, prior to, prior to these expeditions, they had thought that there was a river that would flow from the Rockies west to the Pacific Ocean. So they've been looking for that for decades, and they never found one. And it, in fact, it was called the uh, 
Buonaventure River, which was a legendary mythical river that they assumed was out here because on the east side of the Rockies you have the Missouri River, the Platte River, flows into the big old Mississippi River. You had these big brawling rivers that would float out of the mountains and went to the ocean, Gulf of Mexico on the east side. And they never found them because this is the Great Basin, which means any river that flows into it eventually just dies in the desert and in sinkholes and marshes and sloughs. And this is what the Humboldt did. They followed this winding, meticulously winding river through the desert. And it had no cottonwood trees like the Platte River on the east, east side of the Rockies. It had no good water in it for the most part and it just it was just a really harsh river to follow and so this river would fortunately for them it flow it flowed east to west and it brought them through the desert to essentially Reno and Carson City and then along the Sierra and then they could pick out which route they wanted to get over the mountains there but to get through the desert was really harsh harsh and they had to do it in July and August because they they all started out in April or May in Missouri somewhere or Kansas and because they had to because of the winter snows and then they would have to get over the Rockies and and get through the desert and then get over the Sierras to get to California in fact the uh, the wagon trains would come through and sometimes the Paiute Indians would hide in the reeds of the river and they had blow guns and they would blow darts into the oxen that were pulling the wagons. They would wake up and they would have dead or dying oxen and this became really for them a very desperate situation because the oxen was essentially the motor on which you carried all of your possessions, your cookware, your food, your, your young kids, your supplies and your tools, and you lose your oxen and now you're having to, you're having to walk <laughs> and carry only what you can put on your back or carry in your hands and you're out in the middle of this desert. And the, the, and the, the Humboldt River is 330 miles long. And so people were really desperate. In fact, I got some uh, a book here uh, from the Park Service talking about the California Trail and there was a quote from a journal it said dead horses and oxen in great numbers with stakes cut out of their flesh lay scattered over the land and men without a morsel to eat were begging from wagon to wagon offering all they had for a little dry bread John Clapp 1850 so these people were just they they lost their oxen. They were really in desperate straits. I am rejoiced to see it, to see the end of the infernal Humboldt River, struck down in the parching sands of the immense desert and buried in eternal oblivion. James Evans, 1850. <laughs> he, was six, he was like, finally, I get the last say, you flowing river, you thought you were going somewhere and you're just going into a into oblivion in the desert <laughs> and I get to march on and live <laughs> but uh, yeah pretty interesting a lot of stories about the uh, the uh, California Trail I wanted to go to the Black Rock Desert and camp out there it's a lot farther to go out there from where I live but I want to try that out some night too and that is a huge desert uh, I don't know, five, eight miles wide, 15 some miles long. It's a dry lake bed. And that's where they have the Burning Man Festival every year, every September. There's about 65, 70,000 people show up and they camp right in the middle of the uh, Black Rock Desert. And it's, it's very flat. It's very flat and it's probably, it was easy for the wagons to travel on it. And there was a route that went through there then that ended up going to Oregon. And I remember hearing one story, they had to travel on the Black Rock Desert and in that area at night because it was so harsh in the summer to go through there. The heat was so intense. And so they would travel at night and get on the lake bed and they would follow these 
wagons that were burned. There was a lot of leftover broken down wagons and dead oxen and things like that because people, things just broke down and they had to just keep going. And so what would happen is people would light the, the abandoned wagons on fire and they would use them as a beacon at night to follow so they could go from wagon to wagon to wagon to get across the desert so they could see where the heck they were going. Eer eerie scene to see this as you're going by and seeing this burning wagon and all these people's possessions and then to see the dead oxen sitting there and sometimes even the remains of people laying in the desert. Just really, really harsh. There's nothing like a Hollywood movie, the reality of the, uh, the California Trail. Like I said, 1900 miles of just basically walking through deserts and mountains to get somewhere. So really harsh, really uh, interesting history. We'll talk some more about that though. I wanna go and find some things on the California Trail. There's even leftover wagon ruts out in the desert that are f from the actual trail. And there's uh, maybe even parts of wagons and things out there and stuff. But there's a lot of really interesting history there. So yeah, anyways, that's uh, some interesting stuff for tonight. And uh, it just kind of made me think about traveling in a wagon. I'm in my pop-up camper, which is kind of like a, a little wagon or something. So interesting. But all right, you guys, I will see you in the morning. We're going to get up early and catch some sunlight on these cool uh, buttes behind me here and go check out the lake. And I got a big, huge breakfast to cook and some coffee to make. So we will see you guys in the morning. Hey, good morning guys. I slept really well. It's uh, it's about seven o'clock in the morning. It's chilly today. It's gotta be 35, 36 degrees or something. A little breezy. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get some pictures of some uh, beautiful light on these rock formations and then get some breakfast going. So let's do it. may have found a, uh, a cave. It's pretty interesting looking. Check this out. Interesting. All right, let's go back here farther. All right, 
that's it. But very interesting. <laughs> a lot of fun exploring. I love this kind of stuff. All right, let's go get some breakfast. go. I'm going to put those potatoes right in with the egg there. All right. <laughs> nice light this morning. I love it. That was really fun exploring this morning. I, I got a little bit more exploring down by the lake I'm going to do too. Potatoes really put this over the top. Some kind of a some kind of a Danny's breakfast. I'm not sure what it is. Danny's scrambler number six. With Canadian bacon. Sitting at a little 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 table like this, I feel like I gotta. Excuse me, uh, can I get the bill, please? And some more coffee. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like I'm in a little restaurant, doesn't it? <laughs> a little cafe or something. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, super affordable. I got this. I found this on Craigslist. Uh, Nineteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars, a few years ago. Yeah. All right. I am gonna take a little run down to the the big lake here. I had a number of pickup trucks this morning past my camp and I could tell they were fishermen because uh, just the way the trucks were outfitted with the, the little campers on them and stuff you could just you, I can just tell fishermen so <laughs> but this is a really a big deal fishing fishery down here because of the Lahontan cutthroat trout but you tie into some of these Lahontan cutthroat trout which are native to uh, northern Nevada here which is so cool and they can be quite large. Uh, I don't. I don't know the numbers. I've never fished here, but yeah, I can see a one, two, three, four or five people, two or three different pickup trucks, people fishing out here. So pretty interesting. It is a huge lake. There's a lot of these formations around it too. These tuffa formations. These weird formations are formed by underwater springs that bubble up come up in the water and then it helps it hits the alkaline water and it forms these calcium deposits on these 
reefs almost, these rock formations, these strange rock formations. That's essentially how they're formed is what I've read. And uh, so that what that means is where these weird rock formations are was underwater at one time in the, in the old ancient Lake Lahontan, which was 10,000, 20,000 years ago. So pretty, pretty interesting, but that's how those things were formed. And that's also with Mono Lake and even uh, um, Topaz Lake. Mono Lake was, uh, oh yeah, I'm seeing some more of these weird formations out here. Cool, I'll have to go check those out. <laughs> more, much more to see, so. All right, pretty cool, Pyramid Lake. Yeah, I saw a bunch of fishermen over on this point back here. Must be a good spot or something for them to fish. But yeah, pretty interesting to have a lake, a natural lake like this in the desert in northern Nevada. It's a huge lake. It's almost the same size as Lake Tahoe in uh, just how, how wide it is, how long it is. And it's like the sister lake of Lake Tahoe, the desert version of Lake Tahoe, essentially. Look at these waves here too. I'm just having fun just being out today, just enjoying the uh, the space, the wide open space out here is great. I kind of like, I really like that. I'm not much of a campground person. That's probably why I didn't, I haven't been using the, uh, the camper. I keep thinking I have to be in a campground or something, but I don't. So I think I'll be taking it out more and uh, setting it up and just coming at some interesting places. The Black Rock Desert would be a, a really great place to hang out for a while. There's wild horses out there, a lot of history out there, and all like that, so. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. I gotta get going here. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> this will probably be after the fact, but uh, all right, I appreciate you guys. And as always, keep hiking.